Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So you'll remember a while back I did a review on the Citadel Tracker 22 Long Rifle Semi-Auto. Today I've got the Citadel Tracker 22 WMR Winchester Magnum Rimfire. So let's go ahead and talk about this rifle today. And welcome back. So yes, today we have got the Citadel Tracker 22 WMR. Uh, I bought this rifle because uh, when I did the three-gun comparison between the Ruger Wrangler, the Heritage Rough Rider, and the Chiapa 1873, the Heritage Rough Rider came with the 22 WMR cylinder for that revolver. And so I bought a box of ammo to try it out, and I realized that that's actually quite a bit spicier of a round, so I decided at that point... I wanted to uh, get get a rifle that shot the same uh, ammunition. I got a couple of buddies of mine up north, and they absolutely swear by their 22 WMRs for dispatching skunks and varmints of the like. So I went ahead and I picked this one up. I'd been looking at it for a little while, and I decided I was going to pick it up. I picked it up off of uh, Gunbroker. I got it for $175 plus $15 for shipping, so it was an under $200 rifle. So let's go ahead and talk about the specifics of this gun. All right, so uh, obviously the rifle did not come with the Vortex Diamondback Tactical Scope. I had that lying around, and I went ahead and put that on just for the test firing I did today. Uh, but specifics of the rifle, it is a bolt action. It has a 20-inch barrel. It is magazine-fed. It comes with two magazines, and they're five rounders. They only hold five shots apiece. And believe you me, I tried putting more in, and that's all they will hold is five shots. This has basically the same exact style of plastic modern stock, if you will, as the 22 long rifle version, which I reviewed a few weeks ago. Uh, so it's basically very looks very much the same. It functions very much the same, except for the fact that it is a bolt action instead of a semi-automatic. Uh, this gun does not come with sights. Uh, it is sightless. It does come with scope bases. So the company fully intends for you to mount a scope on this when you get it. So you uh, YouTube monitors out there who think I have made a modification to this firearm, I have not. It is expected that you are going to have to put some sort of optic on here for a sighting system because it does not come with a sighting system. So that's the basic specifications of the firearm. Now let's talk about some of the things that I don't like and there's really only one thing that I don't like about the gun is it is a threaded barrel, but they don't thread it in a standard half by 28 thread size. Uh, this particular gun is threaded in half by 20, which is, in my opinion, the dumbest thing on the face of the earth because nothing is threaded in half by 20. Muzzle devices, suppressors, anything like that that you buy for 22 caliber firearms are all half by 28, but for whatever reason, Citadel decided to thread these in half by 20, which is just ridiculous. Now, don't be fooled. You're going to go out on the internet and you're going to look at websites that sell these things, uh, and you are they are going to say they're half by 28, but I'm here to tell you, when you get it, it will not be half by 28. They are all wrong, every one of them. The company that I bought this from, I actually emailed them, and said, hey, you guys are wrong. This is not half by 28, it's half by 20. And I never got a reply back. They aren't willing to own up to the fact that they had the incorrect information on their, on their website. With that being said, understand if you buy the 22 WMR or you buy, buy the 17 HMR bolt action versions with a threaded barrel, they are going to be half by 20 threads. Now, that is not the end of the world. There's two fixes. One, you can take it to a gunsmith, you can have them cut the threads off, and you can have them re-thread the barrel for half by 28, and you just turned your $200 rifle into a $350 rifle. Or, there's another company out there, and I can't disclose who it is, and I can't tell you who it is, or YouTube won't like it, but if you do a Google search for half by 20 to half by 28 adapter, there is a company out there that is making adapters where you can adapt this barrel to fit the half by 28. The adapter costs about a 
about twenty dollars plus shipping. Uh, they look like they're fairly well made and fairly well machined. They do come with a flats or flats on them, so you can put a backing wrench on it. You can snug it down nice and tight, and if you do use something like a suppressor when you remove it, you'll at least have a way to wrench it off if it gets stuck. So there are options out there, but just understand if you buy this thing, they are not half by 28s. Now, the 22 long rifle is half by 28 because I have physically put my suppressor on that rifle, and it does fit just fine. Enough of that. That's really the only gripe I have about the rifle thus far. Uh, let's talk about the trigger for a little bit. You'll remember when I did the 22 long rifle review, I was not horribly impressed with the trigger. Uh, it was spongy, it was squishy, it did not break real cleanly. This gun is completely different. It has a different trigger mechanism in it, I am assuming because it is a bolt action instead of a semi-automatic. Therefore, the trigger breaks much cleaner. It's about a four and a half pound trigger and it is very crisp. There's not a ton of take up. There's a little bit of take up, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, but there isn't a lot of take up and it actually breaks very, very cleanly. So the trigger is much improved on the bolt action design as opposed to the uh, semi-automatic design. Uh, let's talk about the magazines a little bit. Uh, I, it comes with two magazines. One of my magazines is actually malfunctioning. It Sometimes the round gets stuck in the magazine and I can't get it to feed in the chamber. And I got to kind of tap on it a little bit with the bolt. Sometimes it'll go, sometimes it won't. And all it is, and I know exactly what it is, is the little depression on the front side of the magazine there isn't quite cut deep enough. So I'm actually going to disassemble it. I'm going to take my file and I'm going to cut that depression a little bit deeper because it is not allowing the casing to get past that lip and feed it into the chamber. Uh, the other thing that I noticed with this gun is with Winchester ammunition and the Fiocchi ammunition, which is somewhere here, doesn't matter, uh, every once in a while I get a stuck case, and when you work the bolt back, it does not eject the spent cartridge. And I can tell every time it's going to happen because the round seems like it t it's a little hotter. It shoots high every time, and I think what happens is the... Uh, the powder charge in the casing might be just a little bit more than the rest of the box, and it expands the brass to a point where it won't allow the bolt to pull it out. It's only with the Winchester and the Fiocchi ammunition. All of the other ammunition, I had no problems with extracting the, the spent cartridge. Uh, the Winchester was by far the worst. Uh, the first few shots, I had a hell of a time getting them out, and I actually had to use a flat tip screwdriver, a small flat tip screwdriver, to extract the case out of the chamber. Uh, as I, uh, the shooting went on, I shot about 200 rounds today. It did seem like it got a little better, but it, the Winchester ammunition was still sticking and the Fiocchi was as well. Uh, all that being said, the gun overall shoots very, very well. Uh, it functions very well. I like the trigger. The action is nice and smooth. I have no concerns or problems with that. Uh, let's talk about accuracy just a little bit. Now, I've got a whole bunch of targets here from this morning's shooting session, and I shot a lot because I tested each and every one of these ammo types, and there's, what, two, four, six, eight, nine boxes of ammo here, so I tested nine different ammunition types, and let's talk real quick about how the gun performed with all nine of them. So the worst one out of all of the nine types of ammo was the uh, Winchester 40 grain. I had a 1.27 inch group, and these are all at 50 yards. Nothing impressive there. I was not impressed with the Winchester ammunition at all. It just did not it just did not group like I would have expected it like I would expect ammunition to group, especially at 50 yards. Uh, spear spear TNT was the next worst group. That was 1.19 inches, so they were consistently poor uh, between the two of them. Just was not impressed with that at all. Uh, Fiocchi actually got a little better. The fo Fiocchi full metal jacket 40 grains. Uh, I had just about exactly a one inch group. It was like 1.11. So that actually grouped, you know, fairly well, but it is full metal jacket. So it's not good for uh, small game hunting or anything like that. It's it's more of a range or target ammo. And then uh, Remington Premier. Very surprising. I, I had a good group going here. And then I had one flyer. If you remove the flyer, I'm 0.7 inches. Uh, if you include the flyer I had, it was an inch and a half group. So that that was probably me, and I'll, I'll take responsibility for that. But these are the four types of ammo that 
the gun liked the least, and they were all a one-inch group or worse. I had to include the Remington, uh, whether it was me or not. Uh, the ammo just didn't perform quite as uh, as well as it should have. Even if you take the flyer out, it's a .7-inch group, so it's pretty close to an inch. So these were the four worst types of ammunition. All right, so before we talk about this next group, uh, I need to let you know that I did find uh, that I had a loose scope. Uh, I shot this group and this group, and this, the spread was so poor, uh, I was about ready to be upset uh, with the firearm, but then I went up to adjust the power ring, and I realized that the scope bases had loosened up. So I did a quick field expedient uh, repair right there at the range. I removed the scope. Thankfully, they had some tools there. I was able to snug up the scope bases and get the scope mounted back on again, and subsequently all the groups tightened up. So... Uh, we had CCI game point. Uh, that's, that was pretty good ammo. I pulled a half an inch group at 50 yards, 0.52 inches. Uh, it was very acceptable uh, shooting, and this was pretty affordable ammunition as well, so that, that's always a bonus. The uh, Spear Gold Dot was the next in line. It was 0.51 inches. That was a really nice group as well. Uh, this is actually supposed to be for short-barreled firearms, uh, i.e. handguns. It's kind of a personal defense ammo. Uh, so this is actually technically supposed to be designed for pistols, and that's because it's got the nickel-plated casing on it. So if you're shooting a semi-auto, uh, it feeds better. But uh, that actually punched a really nice group out of my rifle at .51 inches. Uh, the next one would be the uh, Maxi Mags. Maxi Mags did really well, and you can see here this was one of the, the loose scope shots right here. As soon as I tightened it up, I got a .44 group on that one. So the Maxi Mags really did uh, very well against the, again, these are total metal jacket rounds or full metal jacket rounds. So not really great for uh, small game hunting, but you know, that is what it is for range ammo. It actually works really well. In fact, it even says right on there, it's designated for target. The VMAX, uh, Hornady VMAX, 30 grain VMAX, 0.42 inches. That was a an outstanding group at 50 yards. I was really, really surprised at how well that performed. Uh, this this ammunition has got the VMAX uh, style projectile in it, which is the polymer tip projectile. It's supposed to be good for cutting wind and things of that effect. And it, if if it performs like the VMAX bullets out of my uh, 223, it, it actually comes apart pretty dramatically when it hits a target. So it should be really good for small game. Uh, maybe even game up to uh, up to possibly coyotes within a reasonable range. Uh, I certainly wouldn't push a 22 WMR much past 100 yards for uh, humanely and effectively dispatching animals, but we'll see how it goes. And that's kind of my intent here is I actually want to take this rifle coyote hunting because it's so lightweight, it's easy to pack on snowshoes. And the best out of all of them was the Federal Champion Full Metal Jacket. I pulled a 0.3 inch group on that with that ammunition, but again, it's full metal jacket, so it's not really all that well suited for small game. It it would punch completely through to be sure uh, with very little distortion, but it's just not going to do a lot of uh, internal damage and put those animals down the way I want them to. I'm just not a fan of full metal jackets for any kind of uh, hunting situation, but. They did actually punch the nicest group. That was pretty impressive. 0.3 inches at 50 yards. I was very, very impressed with that group. So for my intended purposes, which would be uh, fox and coyote hunting and small game hunting and dispatching skunks and raccoons and the like, uh, the Federal or the Hornady VMAX is actually going to be my ammunition of choice. Uh, it shoots a great group at 50 yards. It's a 0.42 inch group. It can't really can't really ask for much more than that so that's the ammunition I'm probably going to use so then I went ahead and I shot that ammunition out to 100 yards and you can see at 100 yards I pulled a 0.92 inch group which is uh, pretty doggone good now I'm on a rest and I'm in an indoor range and the environment is very very controlled and there's no wind or anything like that so that is a very good group in my opinion at 100 yards especially for a rimfire style uh, rifle and one that's under $200 in cost. You, you really can't gripe too much about that. So uh, just a, just under uh, MOA grouping, uh, very, very happy with the performance of that. Then I went ahead and I did a little test. Uh, I shot 
25, 50, 75, and 100 yards to see if the point of impact had any significant changes. So you can see at 25 yards, that was my impact point right there. Let me get rid of these uh, papers so I get a better, better contrast on the color for you for camera. So right there was my 25-yard shot. You can just see it's on the bottom bottom edge of the bullseye there. Uh, at 50 yards, I was dead middle of the bullseye, and I'm actually on a 50-yard zero. So that was exactly where it should have been. At 75 yards, I was just a touch on the high side. And then at 100 was these two shots. They were right next to each other, and they were still uh, right where they should have been. So there is really no appreciable point of impact change from 25 to 100 yards so the zero that i'm working off of right now uh, i should be able to hit anything that i'm looking for whether it's in the yard up at my hunting cabin or whether it's a hundred hundred or even 125 yards out shooting coyotes uh, i should be able to hold dead on maybe just a touch on the high side at the longer ranges and impact exactly where i'm expecting it to impact so at the end of the day, what do I think about this rifle overall? Well, I can tell you one thing. The damn thing shoots, and it's, it's just that simple. It is extremely accurate. For a $200 rifle, you really don't have a whole lot of room to gripe. Now, grant you, I've got far more scope on this gun than what it really requires. A guy does not need a 4 to 16 by 44 tactical scope on this rifle, but you know what? The setup works, and I'm punching under half inch groups at 50 yards and I'm punching under one inch groups at 100 yards with a $200 rifle. You, you really don't have a whole lot of room to gripe about that. The trigger is great. The trigger really is nice. I like the lightweight of the platform. I like the fact that it comes with two magazines even though one of my magazines is malfunctioning. What really ticks me off is the threading on the barrel. Why they threaded it with a half by 20 thread pitch, I, I will never be able to conceive that. And I, it, this isn't me assuming anything. I literally called the company and asked them to verify that that thread pitch is half by 20. And they said, yes, it is half by 20. You also will get the same thread pitch in the 17 uh, HMR. So uh, don't, don't expect to buy this rifle and just screw, right, screw your suppressor right to it because it's not going to fit. You're going to have to buy either get an adapter or have the barrel re-threaded for the correct threads. Overall, I like the gun. Would I buy it again? Yes. The thread, the threading, okay, yeah, it ticks me off, but it's not a deal breaker for me, and it is it is fixable. It's accurate. It's reliable. I had some sticking issues with a couple of different kinds of ammunition, and you know what? I just avoid those kinds of ammunition, and the world is a happier place for it. All that being said, uh, I would definitely recommend and buy this rifle if you are looking for a budget uh, 22 WMR. This is definitely a nice platform, and it really does shoot very well. I'm very pleasantly surprised by that. With all that, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Now, if you're liking this kind of content and you're liking these kind of videos, please make sure you smash that like and subscribe button down below. Uh, make sure you ring that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. But that is kind of a moot point because I put a new video up every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock without fail. So just your morning cup of coffee on Saturdays, you can watch Jack of All Trades and see what we're up to this week. As always, I want to thank all of my watchers, all of my subscribers, and I want to thank you for watching today. This is Ed with Jack of All Trades. We will see you on the next video.